It's the beginning of another month, which means that it's time for U.S. auto sales data. Joining me from the Lexcom, James Fontanella Khan, to discuss what these results mean. James, what did we learn today about the big three uh, U.S. automakers? Well, there was some positive news overall. Total sales at two of these uh, um, companies, GM and Chrysler's were up, Ford was slightly down, but overall the interesting element is that the, the big SUVs and, and the pickup trucks, which you know had gone a bit out of fashion in the aftermath of the Great Recession, are back in vogue with like, strong double-digit numbers. So there's, there's, some, there's some positive feelings uh, in Motown. And it's an interesting time for auto sales uh, from an economic perspective. The economy, oil prices, obviously you talked about big SUVs, which are gas guzzlers, if you will. Tell us what are kind of the key elements of the macro economy that are driving uh, well, strong. Well, obviously oil prices are now, I mean, compared to a year ago, they're down about nearly a fifth, about 16, 17 percent. Uh, as you said, the economy is stronger, numbers have been revised upwards. And also another important factor is that financing hasn't been so easy in like nearly a decade. So people are just, you know, thinking to kind so of... So this is subprime model lending almost. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's like, as we know, it's a kind of dodgy lending that we saw uh, in, in, in the crisis that led us into the crisis in 2007, 2008. So, so instead of houses, though, now it's cars. Absolutely. Different asset. And you know, origination in the, in the last quarter was at a record nine-year high. $105 billion in the U.S. loan was originated. So that's kind of quite, quite a number. And so we have these companies like Santander, Financial, some other Absolutely. subprime model lenders that have, that have gone public and are taking advantage of this loose well, this environment. This pent-up demand. I mean, for a while, for a long period, demand was very low. And now we're reaching a peak. In, in the last, in November, we're talking of like seasonally adjusted numbers of 70 million uh, autos in sales. That's that. Those are important numbers. Yeah, it's like the pre-crisis kind of high peak, Absolutely. 17 million annually. Uh, but as far as the strong results go, they don't necessarily translate into a great time to go out and buy GM stock or Ford stock. Well, uh, what are the what are the things an investor should think about before they jump into? That's a very good point, Sajid. Because, for example, oil prices and like in general, like fuel. And gasoline prices are down, so one would expect, oh, this is a good time to, to buy uh, because, you know, the, the demand for cars is going to go up. But no, it's not really looking like that. For re one reason is if you have one of those gas guzzlers that, you know, consume a lot of gas, you think, oh, prices are cheap. I don't need to kind of trade my old car for a new, more efficient car. Another thing that is, is important is like 17 million people have been buying these cars on a monthly basis. This is a very high rate. On the adjusted level, I mean, people don't change cars every week. You know, it's so it there's not much room to grow. We're absolutely, sort of, we're sort of reached this peak, and then these are obviously global companies as well, right? So Ford and GM Europe is a disaster. I mean, it, it's and it keeps on to be the case. So you're right. Some hope maybe from emerging markets, but overall, I mean, things are much better. Let's let's not get it wrong, but we're not going to see like whopping growth in, in the next uh, month or so. Okay, so we're not going to be in the, the fast lane right now. for you. Absolutely not. Okay, thank you, James. Thank you, Sajit.